Um, you know, starting with Phil, just you know, just so happy to see his um, the work that he's done uh, be recognized. You know, nationally, and that that's something you can't hope for. I mean, it's a really tough award to win. Uh, he's up against you know four offensive guys that uh, all come from you know pedigree schools and all that stuff. So, uh, but I think you know the whole story. Of Phil is just the kind of coach he's he's always been. Uh, he was a great coach here 25 years ago. He, he's easily the best secondary coach, and I say that with all due respect to some really good people and good coaches, but I, I've never been with a secondary coach that uh, uh, coached to the degree of you know detail that he does and uh, has just had a lot of success stories. Now what he's done with the uh, defense ever since he took it over, it's been an evolution, but uh, done a wonderful job, and I'm sure he just got done, you know, uh, giving credit to the staff too, so it's a team effort. I mean, we do is so just uh, appreciate his efforts. And uh, one thing I've said a couple of times now, you know, one thing about Phil, I think it really makes him unique in this day and age. You know, two jobs uh, in his entire career, basically two paychecks from two different places, and um, that that's pretty unusual. That's pretty unusual, and he could have made a lot of moves, uh, including a coordinator job, uh, whatever it was back in 08, eight, nine, whatever it was. I guess before that. Uh, so I just appreciate the fact that he's been part of our program, loyal to the program. Not that anybody owes us anything, but the fact that he's chosen to stay here and be part of this is just, it's really significant. It's a big part of the reason I'm still standing here. So happy for him. And then the four players, you know, it's kind of interesting. They've all got a little different uh, careers. Uh, you know, think about Torrey's been a four year guy, uh, certainly Cooper, two years now, full time. Um, you know, Jay, really first time as a middle linebacker for us, played a lot last year, but first time as a primary starter for us. Um, and then, you know, Sebastian, basically, you know, it was right at the end of the season where he started to turn the corner last year. So they have all had different paths, but the accomplishment that they, um, level of, you know, that they played at this year, certainly noteworthy. And I think, you know, the commonality, all of them have great attitudes. They all have really strong work ethics, uh, worth ethic, work ethic and, than the way they've improved and every one of them it's a story of improvement and career of improvement and that's really kind of the design of our program that's how we're you know hoping to do it and uh you know we're not looking for a quick fix or hoping to patch too many holes but uh you know i'd rather have guys that grow up in the program that really you know just take the thing forward and just uh take that opportunity and keep growing so just really happy for all four of those guys too and i'm sure you enjoyed visiting with uh, all five of them today uh, Kirk, uh, Luke Lachey, is he going to be available to the uh, – I, I don't think so. No. He's, his rehab's going really well. Um, yeah, he might be close, but it just it doesn't make any sense right sure. now. So, no, I don't think so. Kirk, when it comes to guys that could potentially come back, you know, Cooper, Jay, all those guys, is it pretty easy for you to balance how badly you want them to come back versus them kind of achieving their dream and going to that next level? Or how do you kind of approach that? Yeah, it really uh, – there's a couple of factors. It, it, ultimately, it's their choice. It's like recruiting. You know, we always tell prospects, don't come here unless you really want to come here. Because, uh, you know, it's not good for anybody if, if somebody's, you know, 80% committed to something. So, um, but I think, yeah, I think it's all about them making a good choice, what's best for them, just like a recruit. And to do that, you got to have all, all the factual information, not hearsay, what your uncle says, or this guy, that guy. So, and we try to provide that the best we can. We'll go out and get more information if they need it. Uh, but if their heart's not in coming back, and Riley Moss is a great example, you know, he came back and really made it work for him. And he made it work for us, but he made it work for him. And that's how it works. You know, it's a mutually beneficial thing. If a guy comes back with the right attitude and just goes to work and keeps getting better, which most players do, most good players I've been around do, uh, you know, at least through their 20s. And then, um, but, if, but if a guy's not, not sure, then it's probably a good sign he maybe shouldn't come back because he'll probably be looking over the fence next year during the season. That doesn't do anybody any good. And, um, but, you know, I think our role really is if, if a guy's look, looking to make just a really bad decision, you just try to try to alert them that, to that. But that doesn't always mean you can stop it either. So, yeah, whatever. But, uh, no, we just try to give them, A, the information, and then B, the support that they need. And, you know, let them figure it out with, with their family. Let them figure out what's, what's best for them. Coach, I had yeah. a chance recently to talk to Jason Baker. Um, I know that him hmm. and Corey have a nice little relationship. Is, yeah. is that kind of thing something that you foster among a lot of your guys, or is that something special that maybe you set up just between Jason and Tori? Or do you a lot of, do a lot of that where guys kind of mentor their uh, it's, pre predecessor? It's a benefit of being here, you know, 34 years now. Uh, you know, you guys saw Lon walking off. I mean, Lon played here in the 80s. Um, but there's, there's a, I think, probably a unique thing. That's one of the 
There's some downsides to being somewhere a long time, too. Uh, but the upside, I think, is that you just have, uh, I don't want to call it a network, but there, there's a lot of guys that really care about this program and the people in the program and always always looking to try to help out any way they can. And in Jason's case, um, you know, punters, kickers, it's a little different. Like guys in the bullpen, it's a little different world they live in, different psychology to the, the way they perform. And Jason's had real-life experience in that, a long, long real-life experience. And, you know, he, he, same thing, I was talking about improvement. His best year was clearly a senior year here and uh, just performed at a high level, had a really nice NFL career, ups and downs, couple teams, you know, all that kind of stuff, which is not uncommon. But, yeah, all the things that he's been through, he can he can share that better than any one of us can because none of us were professional punters or or punters for that matter. So, but that that's a nice thing about you know you think about guys that stay connected to this program and um, it, it's it's really a great thing. Yeah, that's a fun part about it. It's a what's benefit. What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the looking at the, uh, the the stage of the of your offensive coordinator mm-hmm. right now? I mean. Are you in, still in fact-finding? Are you narrowing the, the scope? I mean, what, what Yeah, I think we opened uh, the search officially last week, mm-hmm. into last week. So, yeah, it's out there. It's got to be posted, I think, for two weeks. I'm, I'm not sure. Oh, that's, I should know this by now. But uh, anyway, it's, it's a, by the time we're legally allowed to really do something, um, that'll coincide with my schedule. And really, my first, uh, first and foremost thoughts have been on this team. Uh, and they will remain that way through New Year's. You know, we have an opportunity right now. Uh, I think we'd be one of five teams to win more than 10 games here in the history of the program. That's pretty significant. So for me not to be focused on that first and foremost would really be negligent of my duties. Um, and then, you know, we've had a couple of balls in the air recruiting our own guys, actually recruiting and being out of the office and doing some stuff. Um, but And then, you know, trying to map out a plan for this month and make sure we're doing the right things. So, you know, um, I'm still flying by the seat of my pants, but I've, I've made all three phone calls. I'll give you that a uh, little tidbit, three phone calls so far. Hopefully get one more in this week, and then, um, you know, we'll really turn our attention to it when we get back here because, uh, you know, you got to have some face-to-face meetings and those kinds of things. But I feel really, based on what I know right as I stand here right now, I feel total confidence that we'll have a really good person here. And I uh, think there's some strong inf- interest from people that would make a lot of sense that really fit, and I think will fit what we need. And um, yeah, so it, it's going to be it's going to work out just fine unless you know unless the bottom falls out. It could always happen. What, uh, but I'll promise you too, there's going to be a new market of people out there in January. <laughs> what's your relationship? February. What's your relationship with Paul Christ? Respect level. Um, I've always had tremendous respect for Paul. Mm-hmm. I think it's publicly stated, and um, you know, I mean, he did an outstanding job at Wisconsin. Um, ironically, yeah, I mean, just you know, he really did a great job, and that's. You know, since we got here 25 years ago, that's a team we've been chasing. You know, at that time, they were the champs, and we weren't, but we're obviously not. So that's the program that we've really uh, aspired to try to, you know, comp- compete with. And, you know, the good news is over uh, the last five years, you know, our, we've got more wins than they do, and I'm, I'm happy about that. You know, not, not that we can't do better, but, um, you know, so, yeah, I mean, I've always had great respect for Paul. He's a really good person. Really good coach. When you, coach, mentioned, coach Phil when you mentioned the coming back, does that mean you're expecting to have that decision after the bowl game? Yeah, I mean, there won't be a decision before the bowl. I can pretty much assure you that. I don't know if there legally can be a decision by then. So I'll, I'll double check that, believe me. I'm not going to make that mistake. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll figure it out and we'll get it done sometime in January for sure. I'm a coach Philbin and someone that you've been around for so long and mm-hmm. how important and, and what a fit that would be. Well, I, mean, I got great respect for Joe, too. He's a tremendous coach here. Uh, we caught a lot of crap for hiring him out of Harvard. Um, you know, I guess, you know, would have been good if it was a junior high quiz, but not for football. So, you know, but he did an excellent job here. He's an excellent coach with Green Bay. I think they set records when he was a coordinator there. Um, you know, had a cup of coffee as an NFL head coach, which is how that works typically. And, uh, yeah, I got a great, respect, great person, great football coach, and, you know, yeah, no question about that. You know, Brian's got to think about his future, too. Is, is, is his plan to coach in the bowl game right now? I, I think he's intended on it, and, uh, you know, we'll know certainty next week. But, um, yeah, he's, he's got to worry about himself right now, too, and that's probably first and foremost on his mind. Uh, I'm not sure how he did coach through the last five weeks, uh, five games, but uh, I give him a lot of credit for that and a really deep amount of appreciation. Uh, and I think he does it out a little. Uh, first and foremost, the players. That's that's why all we do, all of us do things. Um, and he is a former player. You know, he loves his program. So, 
I think he'll do all he can to help the program. But he also has to, you know, look out for himself too right now. And tell you this, I mean, if he gets a job uh, tomorrow, I don't expect him to be here. And if he is, I may have to, uh, you know, visit with him about that. <laughs> when you if look he... at when you look at. Uh the offensive coordinator, whoever it may be, mm -hmm. will they have to marry their scheme to what you like to do foundationally? Or how much leeway would you give somebody when they come in? Yeah, the parallel I'd give you is um, when we hired Norm, which is probably the single best decision I've made in my, my career, um, going with Norm. And we had three outstanding candidates. One, one of them's uh, uh, a major college head coach right now, so obviously a pretty good coach uh, for a long time. I mean, he's done it for a long time. Uh, but the deciding factor was just, you know, who he was, uh, his personality. I was pretty convinced, you know, he'd been through some things in his personal life. I was pretty convinced it was going to be hard to rock his boat. And uh, I knew there was going to be some boat rocking, you know, going into that 99 year. So, and he was also on top of it, an excellent coordinator, excellent for our staff, just total fit. And it's not a lot different 25 years from now. I mean, later, it's, it's uh, you know, our program's a little stronger than it was, obviously. But, you know, you're looking, in my opinion, you're looking for the same kind of thing. And so the, the analogy I give you is like, you know, I, I wasn't hung up on a three-man front, four-man front, uh, not locked into that or fixated on that. But uh, to play defense, you got to play blocks no matter what front you're in. you got to run to the football in a smart way. you got to be able to tackle. Yeah, you can't give up big plays. Those kinds of things, like, those, those were not negotiable. That's just how you got to do it if you're going to play defense. But it was totally up to him to design, you know, the ABCs, all that stuff. And uh, I feel the same way about this hire. You know, it's the same thing. But anybody comes in here has to have an appreciation. You know, we have won a few games. I know sometimes we all forget about that. We've won a few games here. I uh, probably wouldn't be standing here after 25 years if that weren't the case. And, you know, complimentary football is the best way to win here, in my opinion. And I've got 34 years here. It was no different in the 80s. You have to play complimentary football. You've got to respect the ball. Ball security is critical. Uh, we got away with it in 09 a little bit. But, uh, you know, there's some th certain things that are paramount. And I'm really not worried about points per game, excuse me, uh, <laughs> passing yardage per game, um, you know, all, all the stat stuff. Um, points per game isn't as interesting, it's important. But, you know, I got another one. I'll hold that in my pocket until January for you. Uh, but what is important is wins per game. And if you want to evaluate a quarter, in my opinion, you know, check the wins per game column because you know, I can think of a guy that uh, entered uh, the conference recently that came with widely acclaimed, you know, offensive stats and all that. And that's usually how those guys get to become well known because of their, you know, whatever they're doing, throwing it, running it, wishbone. Um, but, you know, then you look a little deeper. So, what's this guy's wins per game? And there's usually a correlation. You know, people that just throw the ball around, you know, it's it makes it tougher to win. It makes it tougher to be on good defense, uh, good on defense. I think Phil would tell you that. So there, there is a team concept concept here that is is really important to me. It's the only way we can win, in my opinion. In yeah. my opinion, and um, come right back to it. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Damn. Um, it happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah, it still gets down to wins per game, like you know. Oh, I know the other one. There's a school on the West Coast right now that's going to recommit to defense. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a 42 to Tulane last year in a bowl game. So, you know, at a place where, like, you know, Ronnie Lott played. Mm -hmm. So I just mm -hmm. find it, you know, now they're going to think about defense. Like, you know, to me, that that was the first thing we thought about 25 years ago. <laughs> that ain't going to change. Like, that just ain't going to change. So, so the coordinator coming in is going to have to understand, like, this is who we are. It's worked pretty well. We're looking to improve. We're always looking to improve. But, you know. We're, we're not going to be coming to run and shoot. Mouse, no. you know, Mouse Davis isn't coming. No. So, so it comes down to or doing, June Jones. So it comes down to doing what you guys do better, as opposed to making all these huge changes that some fans seem to want. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the objective still is to win. Yes. Okay. Now we had a little exception to that. Okay. But the objective has always been to win football games first and foremost. That's 25 years ago. It was important to me when I came here as an assistant. That was important. It's certainly important to Coach Fry. And so you do what's best to win. And every every week's a different situation. Every game's a different situation. Certainly every team presents different. You know, I mean, we had five guys get the uh, next man up awards <laughs> at our banquet last week. We had one on defense, five on offense. Uh, so now what do you do? You know, how, how do you how do you fix it? How do you work around that? We still found a way to win 10 games. So, you know, I, I would argue our staff did an unbelievable job. Our assistants, not me. The assistants did an unbelievable job. This past year, I would say the same thing about our players. 
because they do the work. They're the ones playing. And that's why you don't hear our defensive guys pitch, because they know what's going on. They know what what is real, what isn't real. And it's genuine. You know, Jack Campbell stands in front of you and says, hey, that's all bull crap. Like, you know, we're, we're together. There's a reason why that is. Uh, one of your former awesome. assistants got a head coaching job this yeah, weekend. That's awesome. Do, uh, really happy for Tim. Yeah. Connecting that to you, do you feel like you, you are good at hiring assistant coaches? And, and well, uh, what, I mean, you alluded to some of it, but yeah. what are the things that really that you focus on? You know, uh, first first answer is yes. I do think we've, we've had pretty good success there. Yeah, you know, not everyone's worked out perfectly, but. Um, again, we wouldn't be here after 25 years if that weren't the case. Phil's a great example. Um, you, you look for guys that are team players, first and foremost, good teachers, good mentors. It's not pro football, and it's very different. Pro football, some of the criteria is very different. But uh, first, our first job is to be mentors, you know, to show our guys how to act, how to do things. And, uh, you know, handling bad situations is a big part of it. And, and you got to be a good teacher. You know, you gotta be, and you got to be a football guy, too. I mean, that's, you know, uh, but what we do is not, you know, it's not nuclear science. Like, this is not a, it's not all that complex. Uh, we try to make it complex, but it really isn't. And the basics are still the basics. A lot of intricacies in there. But, you know, you got to get, get people that, uh, you know, are going to convey those things well to the players. They got to be able to teach them football. They also have to teach them a lot of other stuff, too. And be good team players. You know, we can't expect our team to be a team if our guys are selfish. And, you know, we got guys, you know, jockeying for position, all that stuff. I've, I've seen that, that, that act before. It doesn't work so good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. 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 Thanks,